I always expected big things from Jimmer. The best score in the country. And then things just went downhill. When Jimmer came in, the Kings were unraveling. He didn't have a chance to develop. Why aren't you playing him? He's one of the most efficient offensive players on your team. I kick myself to this day not having a strong structure there. I thought he would stick in the league. It hasn't worked out the way that I wanted it to, but I'm going to continue to work hard. Jimmer, he doesn't get caught up in whys. He gets caught up in how to. It just hit me in the middle of the night. China. I was meant to be over here at this time to work on my defensive speed and the stuff that I need in order to be successful in the NBA. China has given me a second chance in my career. He's Shanghai. He's big time. We had a phrase, someone is doing his job so well, there's no competition. He feels lonely. Jimo Dashen means lonely god, a lonely master. My goal is to make it back, but this time be successful in the NBA. If Jimmer had the same opportunities in the NBA, he would score. I have no doubt. I have my confidence back. Premiering on BYU TV is the documentary The Lonely Master, featuring basketball player Jiminy Ferdet and his journey from BYU to the Shanghai Sharks in China. And he joins me right now. Hey, Jiminer. Hey, Jeff. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for talking to me today. Of course. Thanks for having me on. So let's talk about this amazing new documentary and your journey from playing from BYU into the Chinese Basketball League. This has to be one of the most remarkable journeys of your life. It, it really was. I mean, uh, to be able to play basketball over in China is, is something that not many people get to experience. And uh, I never thought that I would actually experience it, um, you know, but uh, to be able to go over there and, and kind of embrace myself in the culture and get to know the people and the city of Shanghai and uh, all that different uh, aspects of that that goes into playing basketball in China was, was was a lot of fun, a great experience. There was difficult times, but ultimately it was an amazing experience and something that I'll never forget. Now, Shanghai is a long way from Utah. I assume you went through some culture shock. What are some examples of some of the strange things you encountered while living there? You know, it's just very, very different. I mean, uh, obviously the food is something that comes into mind. They eat very differently than we do. Um, a lot of different things um, that, that we necessarily wouldn't consider, um, you know, something for a meal. So, I mean, that's kind of a, cu a culture shock when you get there and you go, you go to a hotel and you're looking at the buffet and you're like, ah, I don't know if I can eat a lot of this stuff. I know I'm going to stick with the rice and the eggs and the broccoli um, and everything. So that's a little bit different. But, um, you know, obviously the people in China are great people. It just is uh, a very different culture. I mean, it's, it's a lot more crowded over there. And, and um, you know, the subway, sometimes when you're on that, it's just absolutely packed. And there's not a whole lot of personal space going on, uh, different types of things like that, that um, you have to get used to for sure. But, um, you know, ultimately I loved it. I had a great experience and, and tried to embrace myself in that culture as much as I could. Now you played for the Shanghai Sharks, which is a great name, by the way. But tell me about fan interaction. What are Chinese fans like? Because I understand you were pretty popular. Um, yeah, they're great. I mean, they, they were awesome to my family and to myself and, uh, you know, had an awesome experience there. But, um, yeah, I mean, there was, a, there was definitely a lot of fans and, and it was a lot of fun. And one thing that the fans do over there, which I did a lot, was um, they gave me gifts before the game, which were super nice. And a lot of times they weren't even for me. Most of the time they were for my little girl, Wesley, or um, my to-be baby uh, now who has been born, uh, Taff, my little boy. And so they're, they're there and they, they find you and they give you gifts and, um, you know, and it's a lot of fun and a lot of support. Um, but they definitely love to get their autographs and they love, love taking pictures. So that's the biggest thing is you'll, you'll sit there and take, you know, 10 pictures with one person just because they try to get the right angle and they just love it so much. So every once in a while, get a little overwhelming, but I, obviously I appreciate the fans and the support that they had given me throughout my career there. So tell me about how they came to approach you to make this documentary about your journey, The Lonely Master. Uh, rumor has it you're a really shy guy. Honestly, it was a difficult decision for myself and my wife to be able to make this decision. Um, but ultimately, we, we felt like it would be a great opportunity to kind of show people um, what I had been through and what our family had been through. You know, it was it's difficult to be away from your family playing over ba playing basketball over in a different country and kind of goes through those those ups and downs of my career, you know, before I got to China and then goes to China and talks about the culture and, and basketball and, and life outside of basketball there and ultimately making it back into the NBA. Um, you know, so it's, 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 it was a lot of fun. Um, 
you know, something that I probably will never, will never do again. <laughs> but, um, you know, to be able to do it this time and to be able to have that footage um, from China that we can always have and be able to show our kids when they're, they're older and, and different people and be able to hopefully have an inspirational story for people as well and hopefully affect people's lives in a positive way. And that's the main reason why I, why I wanted to do it. Well, Jiminer, congratulations on the documentary and welcome back home. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And best of luck with the documentary. It's an amazing story. Okay, thanks, Jeff. You can catch the documentary, The Lonely Master, on BYU TV. Also, you can check out more reviews and interviews on my website at VegasFilmCritic.com. I'm Jeffrey K. Howard in Las Vegas. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.